The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, breaking into. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's most influential entertainment figures, highlighting their tips, tricks, and techniques on breaking into the entertainment industry. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, breaking into. Hey. Here we go. Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> turn it up. Turn it up. Hey. <laughs> Can you welcome, hear me? welcome, welcome, welcome. This is breaking into a special episode today. This is breaking into conscious filmmaking. Yes, conscious filmmaking. As you many of you guys know, I, my motto is lifting each other up, sharing knowledge, and paying it forward. And in this episode, we're going to do all three. I'm James Lodge, your host. You can follow me on Twitter at Black Hope LA, of course, with the hashtag breaking into. And then, of course, we have the Facebook page breaking into also. I want to welcome two people who are involved with this movie that I can't wait to see, and it speaks to me personally. It's called Can You Dig This? And we're gonna show you a clip a little later. Uh, but the two guests I have with me, first I have the director. Hi. She's also, she's also an actress and dancer too. It's true. Delilah Velo. And a karate yes. master. A karate master, you're right, karate master, that's Ninja. right. <laughs> Ron better watch out. Ninja. Okay. He's on wheels it's right now. <laughs> There's a lot of force in this elbow. Ooh, I love it. And they're bony. And, and, and the gentleman next to her is someone that my cousin Bobby's a big fan of yours actually really? she's like are you gonna have him on your show he is the he is the the gangster gardener also her gorilla gangster gardener I've heard all kinds of names for it well, renegade, I mean, good names. you know renegade gardener but wait wait let's back up okay this is about this is about black Hollywood yes and the show is called breaking, breaking into, into? Yes. I mean don't let's look at that for a minute okay black people and yes. then you got breaking into yes okay we'll just let that go. Ooh, we, we, we talk about that <laughs> we, talk, we totally talk about that I don't, I don't know ron finley ladies and gentlemen <laughs> challenging the system i love that you done great chat please challenge the system i'm not some young kid i've been around a long time i'm a grandfather of three it's crazy. oh crazy yeah so welcome to my show thank and you all, in all seriousness no, welcome for to sure my for show. sure thank you um, i want to tell you a quick story mm-hmm. why this is really personal for me uh, when those of you out there may not know, I when I do my bookings for my show, some are given to me, brought into my brought to my attention. Others I get on my own. Oh, there we go. And you guys were brought to my attention. And when I saw in the email South Central Los Angeles, and I saw Urban Gardening, I was in because um, I grew up. I grew up in South Central. I currently live there. And I'm back there again, and I'm an urban gardener. Really? I completely believe in beautifying and eating my own food and having plants and flowers. Um, but my, it stems from my grandmother Lot, who lived 10 blocks away from me. And when I was growing up, she had a garden. And, we, and I learned what turnips were and radishes and beets and figs and pears and how to tend to them, how to, how to eat healthy. And my cousins and I recently had this talk about how many of us go to farmer's markets to get our, get our stuff. Um, and how we eat the way we eat, the way we look at things. Many of us have gardens of our own, and we still live in the hood. Mm-hmm. And it was because of her. And so when I saw this this come across my desk, I, it just it really affected me. It really did. Um, and I can't wait to see this film. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad it did. It's um, affected people all over the world, not just you know in the United States. So um, I would like. I mean, people need need to know about people like you that. We, as African Americans, don't have the reverence for the soil that we should. We don't understand that that's where the gold comes from. You know, we have this legacy of slavery, so people don't want to touch soil. And I'm like, no, no, dude, how you think he got that that house on the hill? It wasn't from you. It was from the soil. Anybody could have worked it. It just chose you. Now just imagine for one minute, one second, that you own the soil, what you can do, because that's where every, that's where life's springs from and people don't you know so what we literally have to do is change culture that's what we're culture changers because we gotta mm-hmm. we gotta go back and, and let people know no 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 you can't you, you have to change your life and it starts with, with what you eat you know because i like to say you know they taught us you are what you eat and that's not t- true you are what you eat eats mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Plants eat soil. Mm-hmm. That's where their nutrients come from. So imagine if this soil is devoid of all kinds of nutrients because it's been sprayed and, and it's mm-hmm. tainted and it has all kinds of you know junk in it. What do you think that plant's going to be? And that's what you're taking into you. You're you're eating something that's alive. You're alive. I mean, we're I like we're, we're like a leaf. Mm-hmm. We are we decompose just like a leaf, and people forget about that. I tell know? folks when I'm out in the sun, I feel good. Oh no, doubt. No. When I'm in, when I because I have a busy life and I don't really have days off. I don't know what that is, but I have moments off. All right. And I found that when I'm having a stressful day and I'm at home. And I've had 8,000 emails, <laughs> and mom is calling me about why I haven't been over in two days. And everything's going on. I go outside, and I tend to my tomatoes, my sweet potatoes, and I feel just an hour of that. I feel so much better. It becomes your solace. I tell people you don't need meds. You need a garden. That's right. Okay, because that's your medication right there. And they, they've taken that from us, especially in the hood, as you well know, being in South Central. You know, there's no other place that we can drive around in the city and you see used wheelchairs on the side of the street. And all that represents to me is somebody that lost their legs and then they died. And now here's another space for somebody else to die. And it has a new battery. You know, mm, so like people don't like see, people don't look at it that deep. You know that yeah. you, we, you don't see wheelchairs on the side of the street for use like used cars in in Brentwood. No, you no, don't. Pasadena. No, you know. So no. it's just us because there's a p- proliferation of um, f- drug stores, legal drug stores mm-hmm. everywhere, and then the alcohol. Well, I, lo- I love that your thing about how you like to your garden to quote unquote face the street. Yeah. I love that. Because there are spaces, you know, on the side or there's spaces where it's like, it's just nothing, it's just dead. They call them parkways, and we, oh, you know, sorry. actually managed to get the law changed in, in LA where you can now use that space to oh, plant good. food because it was, um, the ordinance was against that before. So yeah. um, the thing with me is, it's great, yeah, we got it changed, but does anybody know? Did you do a, did you, do, do we have billboards? Do we have an yeah. agenda to put it out there? Do we want people? Do we have workshops to show people that the city put on workshop? Hey, this is how you can remediate this soil. And it's like you said, it's not just about food. Mm-hmm. I tell people, it's, it's like, how much food can you grow here? I'm like, I really don't care. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't measure. I don't weigh. It's about people, mm-hmm. first and foremost. It ain't about it. food. Is is there? But it's about people first, and that's about changing culture and, and getting changing lives. And yes. I do have my garden facing the street. So, and it's what you stated earlier, it's for beautification of our neighborhoods. What we can make these strips look like, we can create our own ecosystems. We can bring insects, we can bring pollinators mm-hmm. just by planting something. Mm-hmm. And it just it just happens, because they need it. They don't have nowhere really in the hood to these, I mean, I got dragonflies. I mean, what's the last I time? Know, I had a few, but also yeah. recently, too. I was like, where'd I come from? Yeah, when's the last time you seen a dragonfly <laughs> right. in the hood? So, right. um, and I got these gangster bees, man, that just came up. No, these my bees is gangster. Okay. And, and Delilah, tell these gangsters. <laughs> you these, seen them, girl? No, these, across the way. Yeah, yeah you're like, oh, yeah. These, gangs, these bees don't play the radio, the piano, <laughs> the telephone. These bees don't play. All right? Wow. They're pollinating. Yeah, but they came, you know, they came over and like, yo, we like this spot, dude. And we need bees. People don't realize that we do need bees. Bad. I mean, we, no, we, yeah, we need a really bad, you guys. We really need bees to continue our system. So how did this come, this subject come to your forefront, to your orbit? Um, well, I have a interracial upbringing. My, I have a white mom from Hollywood and a black dad from South L.A. And I knew my dad up until I was about nine. Okay. And spent a lot of time in South L.A. and definitely noticed the disparity between the two areas. From a, children, oh, yes. from a child's perspective. Okay. I didn't know exactly what that was. but um, And then years later found out that my father was sick, so South L.A. kind of came back into my okay. my uh, my world. And um, I wanted to go back and explore the area. And also the idea that, like, in America, we talk about pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. Mm-hmm. And the question for me is, how can you do that if, you don't have the resources. I mean, is is it possible without resources to pull yourself up by your own no. bootstraps? Right. And I'm I'm all about you know being self studied. And I didn't go to mm-hmm. film school, but I made a film. It's like you know, reach out for for whatever it is that you you mm-hmm. can and, and get things done. Um, so my my mind was already in that. And then I'm part of the zeitgeist, like everybody else is. Everybody loves you know natural food oh, and, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm part of that too. 
and then um, friends who are producers at Del Delirio Films saw Ron Finley's article in the LA Times. Okay, yeah. And discussion arose, and he's got this great diatribe, you know, planning Just your own. And garden well, I'm going to say it in my school teacher voice. Um, <laughs> planning your own vegetables is like printing your own money. <laughs> You can say like it better, that. but you know yeah, stuff like right. that, and I'm thinking this is this is amazing. Is this is this real? You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like the idea, I yeah. really do, and I'm yeah. all behind it. But like, let me see firsthand, and so that's where I got the impetus and um, was passionate about the idea and right off the bat. And they stalked me. I, they stalked you. Uh, yeah. Wore you down, didn't they? I, I mean, they would come over in the middle of the night. You know. <laughs> Send women. I had one day. They put pole dancers outside my door one day. It was ridiculous, man. I'm like, this, this how you get down in Hollywood? Apparently. All right. It worked. Obviously, it, it works. It worked. Yeah, then. I think Juan had encountered some, uh, you know, his internet fame and had a lot of Hollywood people after him. And I see and it was just not? like one of it. them, like sort of the scared. Oh, I see why. Like I totally see why. People. Mm -hmm. From from Hollywood, let's make a movie. Right. I see Don Cheeto playing you. Okay, yeah. I don't oh, see a document. I'm like, would that? you please take your shoes for a walk? Dude? <laughs> I mean, really? Like, so he was a hard. I mean, it was not easy. Yeah, no, it wasn't. But he, I don't know what point. Actually, I've had in other interviews people say, well, what? When did that yeah. happen? That he? I think he looked at footage that I yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. No, I, that footage where you guys went out and you. You know, you put in respect. You found people from my TED that not not actual people from my TED, but people that I talk about in my mm -hmm. TED, and they like. I'm like, this, this is kind of brilliant. How oh, fun! Okay. Uh, yeah. So that. So I was all in after that. You yeah. Because I, I just thought that was that was um, that was a good concept, and I had I've been approached with all kinds well, of sure. concepts, and it was just you know people look at you know you and they don't know who you are and they don't know your history and, and I've kicked people out of my place because they, they come in thinking you know that that you want fame and fortune right. and everybody fortune. don't want that yeah and you know and you don't know where you don't know where I've been dude you right. don't know who I am you don't know nothing you don't know who my daddy was but you come over here and you don't know me and you see a black face so, and you see me in the hood so you just automatically mm -hmm. think <laughs> yeah. It, yeah that I ooh money 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 and it ain't, it ain't like that dude mm -hmm. I got some money you know right. what I'm saying? And, but I, with the biggest thing that I have, I have a code, and I also have integrity. I love it. You know, and and, pe and they they're not used they're not used to that. Oh, no, they're not. You know, so um, you know. That, yeah. that's, I say that some big... people have integrity in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. I'll say that there are a few. I have integrity. Well. I have integrity. I'm in Hollywood. I have integrity. Yeah. No, but, but I know what you no, mean. No, not just not just Hollywood. Just period. Yeah, period. No, I, you know, it's it's hard to find people with a code, man. Right now, it's very and true. It's, um, and that's, you know, that's one of the things that um, people that work for me, it's like you have, you have to have a code, you have to stand for something, you know. And um, it, was, it ain't about money, you know. And, they, and once you get, as you know, you get to a certain age, and you're, it ain't about money. It sure is. And it ain't about that. But can we, can we build something without it? Hell no. Right. But that, that shouldn't be the impetus. That shouldn't be what... what wakes you up in the morning you know and I, i've always told my sons operate from happy I like that because like if, if you if you go into a job every day if you would uh, the person you with every day what well, mm -hmm. if you ain't happy bounce you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it, it ain't mm -hmm. to me it ain't, it ain't worth it and that's mm -hmm. um and that's real yeah, you know so is. so it is it, it's um you know let your dream be your life and your life be your dream you know like, what you know how you're saying that like it's it's almost not free, but one of the things that I learned from following you is just how almost free planting a seed is, mm -hmm. and it's so easy, it's like, just the, yeah. the you know, <laughs> that, that it's not that hard, right. and that the plant no. creates another seed, and then that... No. Like, I, I love, love watching thousands growth. Thousands of more seeds. I yeah. love watching growth in yeah. my plants. It's and crazy. I, still, I feel so proud of myself. Well, I mean, my whole thing is, you know, the watching growth I mean when you watch that you're watching yourself and that's mm -hmm. what it's like I know what you like you stated the soil seduces you it becomes your solace that's good that's you a good know one. Yes. and and it and yes. I've seen it happen to men women and children so um yeah it, it is it when I'm saying building something though I'm it you know that's what I'm saying free if you want you if you this whole 
you know, like I, I talk to these colleges and a lot of these kids is like, oh, money is evil. And I'm like, no, no dude, it's not evil. money is not evil. You got some evil clowns with money, but money That's... itself is not evil. No. And I tell them, try doing something with money and then try and try to do the same thing without and see how far you get. Mm -hmm. I said, who do you think came up with the concept with that propaganda about money being evil? It was a bunch of rich ass people with a lot of money mm -hmm. that said, money's evil. I'll hold that for you. <laughs> yeah, no, you yeah. don't need that. You yeah. know, and that, and, and, and they and they they don't get it. You know, um, the, the way we trade and everything now, it, it's capital. So, my thing, if you want to change the world, get us all the money you possibly can, and then get twenty percent more than that, so you can see. I want to see the change in my life. Period. You too. You know, I don't. I don't and everybody's talking about the future now, dude. It's now. My future. Pressure. Yeah, my future is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's five minutes from now. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I yeah. want to see it. I want to eat the piece of the cake that I bake. You know, so mm -hmm. so it ain't no 20, 20, 20, 50 with no. me. No, mm -hmm. no, do this today. It's right. tomorrow. So right. I want to be a part, and I want to bathe in whatever I do. So that that's why yeah. that's the street I come from. It's funny because I'm a professional organizer, certified life coach, in my other life, and um, and I always tell my clients. A lot of times, and maybe you guys can expand on this for this, when you organize and straighten and clean your home, it can affect how you feel about yourself. And so you talk about that a little bit with the gardening, same thing. It's like you, you're taking, you're tending to your garden, you're making your outside beautiful, you're tending to and you're giving. I mean, it gives you some kind of self-esteem and self. I mean, how do you feel about that? Um, well, you made me think about Hawaii. Okay. And it's so beautiful there. And just, not just South LA, just our, our cities in general, we've got this idea that they've got to be concrete and they've got to look a certain yeah. way. And you can't walk by and pick a blueberry because we've made these rules, like water fountains are free, uh, yeah. air is free, and our system has to look paved over and, and all this stuff and that we can create these other sort of realities with lots of trees and all those, that solace yeah. that you're talking about, yeah. that, that that is almost free and that that could make us all feel like we're off in Hawaii. Like maybe we don't have to purchase the ticket to go there. Or we can you know, create it here. Yeah, I like that. And that's that's kind of it's funny because the color of my house and, and the you know it's like Jamaica or something. And people are like, where do you think <laughs> you live? Where do you think this is Jamaica? I'm like, yeah, I, if I can't be there, at least yeah. I can okay. act like I am. Right. So the whole thing is to is to build beauty. I wanted people to be a, assaulted with color and smell and beauty and, and conversation and culture when they walk by my garden and that's what happened. You know, um, you can walk past my place and there's butterflies and there's bees and you, you go across the street and there's there's nothing. There's no life like that. I know. So you could, what what I mean on a lot of what's created there, I didn't know, you know, that that's was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Like making compost made me realize yeah. that nothing dies ever. Ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at compost, when you look at that alchemy, when you when you look at that science, when you look at that art, and not, you don't have to do nothing, and it's 150 degrees, you know, right. just turn. If it was dead, where the hell did this heat come <laughs> right. from? Right. You know. So I mean, it, the uh, we should have <laughs> the garden should be the school, not the other way around. We should have schools in gardens, mm -hmm. not gardens in schools. Earlier, yeah. You know, and because. Um, We've we've lost it, man. Especially one of, you know, one of the reasons I do this, man, is because I just saw our culture, you know, being decimated, being lost, being being taken, being stolen, and, and being um, mm -hmm. Shanghai. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just terrible because, and as a child, you don't even know that that's happening. You don't right, even. But you know, don't. You're, you're right. a child. You know, you're mm -hmm. you're a kid. You don't you don't know yeah. that you have a barcode on your neck that's readable by a, a prison scanner. You know, and that I what I do is kind of stealth you know people it's, uh, it, yeah it's about food but first it's about it ain't about no damn hope okay uh, yeah. it's like hope oh I hope no yeah. it's about opportunity you can't do nothing with hope but hope but hope right you know give these kids the opportunity you know they're gonna change the game give them a uh, give them a situation where they can learn something Okay, where they can learn to do I something, where they yes. can learn how to use their hands. Where instead of these schools that are teaching them, I've been in these schools. I sure, walked yeah. through the hall. Yeah, I, and it, and it's these neighborhoods, these this culture that they is by design. Is we didn't design this culture. It's, yeah, it's been designed for us, but we just 
we're laying right in the cut with this culture. Because I was having this discussion with somebody, my Uber driver this morning, uh, who was black, and I said, you know, what happened to our, I always believe for myself, I walk around as a village. Right. That was our culture. Like, yeah. what happened to, and, and like, what happened to our village mentality? That what I do affects you, what you do affects her, what she does affects him. Like, what happened to that? Why aren't we collectively, I mean, how, look how strong we'd be together. Yeah. Well, that's, Oh, the, the show too, I'm the, sure. But the yes. system, <laughs> the system. I mean, when you think about the system, don't want you strong. I mean, right. just imagine, just look who's benefiting from this. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at the. You don't see that. You don't see dialysis centers. We've created a medical industry, another, oh, yes. <laughs> another yes. medical industry, the yes. dialysis center. You don't see them in Brentwood. You don't. No. You, you know, but every city, if it's black or brown, that I've gone to across the United States of America, is a blinking light. <laughs> Dialysis mm-hmm. center. That's true. Instead of telling people, hey, dude, why don't you change your diet for like seven days and see what happens? Right. Here, we're going to give you this. I, I, I have a person in my life who hasn't had a vegetable wow. in probably like 20 yeah. years. Yeah. I got people that, that think watermelon grows on trees, and that's real. I'm not, oh, like, oh, that's I'm not real? kidding. And you can't, oh, my God. But you can't blame them. No. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Not, because yeah. it's, you can't blame them on that kind of ignorance because they, they, have, they have not been exposed to it. And that's what we need. We need our the culture. Food is a part of the culture. Yes, it it's is. It's not the Very culture, but right. it's, it's a major it. part of the culture. And I, we need these kids need to be educated. I mean, because it's all of, to me. If you know how to grow food, until you know how to grow food, you ain't free. So the, we we're enslaved. And I and I talk to very rich white people in these conferences running, and I tell them the same thing. If you don't have a hand in your food, mm. you're a slave. Period. Because they can kill you, they can starve you, mm-hmm. or they can do what they do. They're killing us real, real, real slow with all this garbage that they're putting into our food. I'll tell you, for me, just uh, there's times when I go out there and I get my potatoes, and then I have my, my chives I'm growing, and my sage I'm growing, and I make myself something, and I, like it literally is from me. Right. There's, right. A, there's, there's a sense of pride in it that. It makes you feel proud. Oh, hell yeah. Easily. Now, why did you choose documentary style and not a not a film? And this was your first film that you my, directed. My second second uh, feature. The first one is a really super low budget suspense thriller <laughs> that people love to hate <laughs> and <laughs> they love to. <laughs> Can I tell you? <laughs> um, oh they love to hate and love yes. to steal as more than they love to hate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just pirated across the web. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, this is my my second feature. This one's a doc and documentary because we have a real life human being here yes, we do. that we want to track <laughs> and real life human beings yeah. that we were telling <laughs> personal stories about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And how was he to work with? I mean, he's a character I could tell already, but how's he to work with? He's great. Yeah, I think okay. that. Um, <laughs> Not to talk about you like you're not here, but he... <laughs> do. Do you know he's not here? He, talk about I, here. You know, I feel like okay. <laughs> Ron reacts to people being operating out of integrity, and if you can do that, then you'll you're be good safe. with them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, what, was, what was she like to work with since she came to her? Good. I mean, that's, I, like I said, the concept that came back with, um, I enjoyed it. I mean, sure. I, I enjoyed working with them. I mean, she, it's it's a lot of people. I tell you, man, I, I send them packing. You wow. Know? So, um, because it's just, again, it's just the people they they just think you can be bought and sold, and it's kind of insulting. Oh, it's, no, know? it's not kind of. It is. Yeah. Well, because and I used I, I was a guy. I mean, I'm a trade. I'm a fashion designer. That's yeah, what I, I, I was. That's what I've done on okay, my life. Yes. So, um, and being black in that industry, being black and doing what I'm doing now, it's mm-hmm. like. People don't. You're you're kind of rareish, you know. So what I used to do, I used to, I used to have people. I used to have appointments, but I'd be outside in overall sweeping the street, and I would see how they would greet me, mm, you know, yes, to, to let sure. me know what kind of conversation we're gonna have and if I'm gonna deal with you, you know, because you don't understand that this is just clothes, dude. This is a costume, right. Right. but you you let this say everything about me. It's like it's like too. it's like. Yeah. I, I want I want to do a video so bad. Maybe Delilah, do, Delilah will do this. Hey. with me. I want to do a video of who should we be scared of? Who are we scared of? These guys on the corner because they got their pants sagging and they got big clothes. Are these guys with these six hundred and fifty thousand dollars suits on in the bank room? I mean, who who has done more crime? 
No, and nobody, yeah. nobody, but but, and I and I, I've used that. I can, I get suited and booted. Oh, sure. And I get straight in. Yeah. You know, and I, I got some jeans on or something. And I say, you know, still neat. Yeah, no, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and the whole, hey, it's private. It's, you know, and and it's like, I was the guy that was in here yesterday, dude. You know, with mm-hmm. the, with a very expensive suit on. So it's funny. I I I excuse me. I actually use that. That's my like social demonstration yeah. kind of thing. You know, yeah. Like, okay, how are you going? Just because I got these clothes on, you think that I'm, you know? Yeah, we've had. I've had. Uh, my last guest was a black opera singer, mm-hmm. and named uh, H. Warren Sharp. He's a great guy. And I went to one of his performances at a furniture store, right. and it was kind of <laughs> funny. So me, like, you know, imagine. So I'm dressed really nice, and I'm standing by this furniture, <laughs> waiting for the show to begin. And this chick says, so "How much is the furniture? How much is this this table?" And I go, I don't know, I don't... She's like, no, no. She's like, so you don't work here? I'm like, no, I'm here with the talent. Right. <laughs> and meanwhile, he said he had an experience where he got there, and they're like, so you're here to yeah. set up the lights? Or something like, oh, you have the flowers or something? He's like, no. I'm dressed, I'm the, I'm the talent. No, you know who Melanie Hops- Hobson is? Yes, I've heard before. She, she married this guy that did this very, very small movie called Star Wars. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, beautiful black woman yes. who... Um, they were they went they were going to some event she she tells it in her TED and her and her friend and they walk in and they you know this yeah. kind of, she's well, she's a she's a beast yeah. she's a beast in her own right yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying aerial investment so she walks in and she says that um, immediately oh my god you know okay the help you have to go into the back <laughs> and they she she directed them to the back Ooh. of the kitchen. There you have it. <laughs> there you have it. Yikes. Mm-hmm. It's like, excuse you know, me, so it never really this, ends. This woman runs Chicago, right. you know, and they, like, they didn't even, so all they saw was this. Yeah. You know? Yes, which so we all know about that, obviously. Yeah, it, it, it's still what happens. But. Yes. So uh, I want to actually show, I want to show the, the clip of the film. I think mm-hmm. I believe it's a trailer, and let's go ahead and show that, and then we will continue. I want to see Delilah's first porn. I mean, her first movie. <laughs> Why Can we see a clip me? from that? Oh, what's going on? Sorry. Okay, one second. This is the clip they sent me. Okay. Um, so now for you, Delilah, I mean, it's going from acting and dancing, and then you did one feature, and I just, what did you? what have you learned on your journey as a director? Yikes. Um, on this on this last mm-hmm. movie, um, uh, documentary wise, I learned that you have to open up Ooh, okay. for people to open up. Okay. If you want to really have genuine stories, yes, um, that you have to give. You can't just take. Um, if you're doing a narrative, there's a different type of giving, but it's um, you you hire people to. Play the roles for you, and you can be a little bit more introverted and yeah. in your head. And heady as a director, but as a, as far as a doc goes, it's it's a it's another story. Um, and that probably before I jump into any other doc, it has to be something that I'm really connected to because it takes up a huge portion of, of your life. Yeah. Like that, you really have to live whatever it is that you're you're telling a story. So you're about. very immersion. You're kind of like an immersion documentary. For sure. I mean, I guess that there's, uh, you know, kind of informational docs that could be of interest, but that's that's even more more linear, and I think takes more work from producers um, around you because you're de- dealing with a lot of research and and that type of thing. But yeah, I'm more of a kind of a character driven documentary style person, and I would probably always um, opt to live with whoever it is. Or very closely with whoever it is that I'm, I'm following. Um, other than that, I mean, it's hard to say. I've learned, you know, growing as a as a human being. Yeah. But uh, I think it's interesting working in this industry as a female. Please, let's yeah, let's talk about that. Um, and not so much on set. I mean, once I'm I'm working with people, I I don't see too many disparities. Um, but I. Now I'm at a place where the the doc is finished, and I have a few things that I'm pitching and working okay, on, and okay. I do have support around me. And it's 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 a curious thing. Is it, you know, is this thing, you know, not going because, and or is it going? Be, you know, you, you oh, never because, know. Because right, right. You never, yeah, you yeah. never, you never quite know. Yeah. But I have already had the um, 
you know, I pitched something okay. that is of pretty big interest where this company wants to, you know, move forward with the project, but they don't want me, to, they want oh. like to spend around $20 million on, on the concept that I pitched. Wow. However, they want to use a guy to, to direct who has <sighs> a, um, you know, a name. Okay. But so my argument was, okay, I understand you've got to put money, we are talking about money, yeah. and I have to see their side if I'm going to work with right. them. So I, I do get it, but I'm I'm thinking, aren't there guys who've done their little indie projects mm -hmm. and then they get they go jump right to yeah, the, the right big right. big yeah. budget? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, we'll we'll get like a great team around me, the most awesome DP. Thank you. We'll get a great right. stunt group of you know people and visual effects right. team, and you producers chime in as much as you want. You know, <laughs> let's let's do right, this. Right. I'm not working by myself, right. and that's not quite enough yet. So uh, I don't know. I mean, is my my pitch not good enough? Like I'm still still working in that realm because you you can't always point the finger and say it's some, yeah. somebody else's fault but I there's a sort of a curious kind of a jump that I'm, I understand I'm I'm you gotta work extra extra extra, extra hard, hard. Yeah. yes yeah I mean you know you and I we chose this profession <laughs> of sorts and 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 I came late to it obviously so luckily I'm very happy that I had a lot of life experience before I came into this because I think I've been weeping in the corner eating my hair half the time <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm like, some of the things that I've, I'm like, oh, okay, sure, I mean, that, that's okay. Um, now, I think we, now I think we're ready to show the clip. So let's show it. I'm not a gardener. Let's start there. But um, it's in our DNA. If you believe some of the fables, you know, like the first job, think about it. The dude was a gardener. Big guy said, told him to take care of his garden. Uh, you asked me how I got into gardening. I was out of work. I had been paying someone to mow my dirt. <laughs> and uh, and I thought, first, I can do it myself. And secondly, I can grow food there. And I planted my Eden. It turned out to be paradise on the street. All of a sudden, there was birds I've never seen in this, in this area, ever. I, I, December 1st can't get here fast enough. It's going to be on video demand December 1st, you guys. Is I it? can't. That's what December 1st, VOD, and also uh, theatrical on demand, too. So people can okay. get the movie in any city that they want. So it's a P I, and play. It's playing here on the 3rd at the Independent. Oh, okay. The Kitchen bought, uh, bought the whole movie theater wow. and they're having a party. So. Wow, it's, I mean, it's like five dollar tickets too. They just bought it and they're gonna sell the tickets for five dollars. Oh, so see, that's like yeah. that's not bad at all. Seven o'clock, um, the third at the Independent. So very good. And don't the proceeds from that go to your foundation? Yes, or? It goes to the Ron Finley Project. Yes, yes, that's good. Oh my God, I'm just it just you know watching that. I already start getting myself. I'm like I'm in that feeling already. I'm just so I I can't wait to see it <laughs> because I mean because gardening really did. I mean it affected my life in so many ways that yeah. I didn't even realize. Until I became grown, exactly. owned my own house, and now have my own garden. I have this yeah. huge yard, and I was looking at it going, what can I do with this thing? Yeah. And people were like, just pave it over, or just like, yes. you know, <laughs> do the, the tough Terminators and put all this stuff on the rocks. I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I, I said, I want, and my, and my house on the inside, I have lots of plants inside too. And people were like, how do you grow plants? I mean, I'm like, well, I talk to them, I tend to them. There's things that I do. I do, I talk to my plants. Yeah. I well, talk to them stuff. When you realize that they are alive. We forget that. Mm -hmm. We forget that um, that they are energy, just like we yes. are. You know, yes. We forget that we share fifty percent of our DNA with bananas. You okay. Know, um, you, these things, the, the plants are alive. It's just like what you you see a sunflower. You know, My and where is it gonna go? It's gonna go towards the sun. It's mm -hmm. gonna ba bask in the sun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're my favorite. I mean, I plant them. I usually have 150 or more wow. on my corner just because of how they transform people's mind. How they, they make people, you know, you can see somebody, you know, down, depressed. I mean, even like there's a lot of alcoholism, as you know. Yeah, right there, and then you don't even know that how many functional alcoholics are around. And it's just sad. But mm -hmm. I've had people that, you know, that tell me, I go out of my way every day to walk by here. Oh, you know? And okay, it's yeah. like, so it's like, yes, my job is done. You know, I had an idea what I'm yeah. supposed to do, but so you you can. It's almost impossible for anybody to look at a sunflower and not smile. Hello. Yeah. So that's and I want them there. I mean, we miss 
And when, that's what I mean. It's not just about food. It's about your whole environment that makes you healthy. It's not just your food. You know, so it's like we need color therapy in these neighborhoods. We need mm-hmm. beauty in these neighborhoods, and they're not designed for beauty. So I'll have these people that come by and see this 15-foot sunflower, mm-hmm. you know, and they'll, they'll break it. They'll just tear it down, snatch it out the grass. Or if people come by and cut them, please don't cut the sunflowers. I'll give you one. Grow your own. Right, I yeah. Don't get some, but, but, but what do they do? They still cut them. They, and some people come by and they, just, they desecrate the garden because it's almost like you see it beauty makes them feel uncomfortable you know mm. when they see something beauty for the first thing you can do I, I kill it you know yeah. right no, yeah, yeah, you know? right no right, yeah, right. It's like, throw it hit it with a rock you know <laughs> oh, okay you know so and and this and and this is like again this is a social experiment for me this gardenism and and how it has transformed people and how it um how it does affect some people but we still have this element man that it's the whole thing that they weren't raised with this they weren't raised to love beauty they weren't mm-hmm. raised to appreciate art and that's what a garden is to me it's your canvas it's your art it's what do you want to show who no one needs to tell you the first brush stroke to put on your painting do you so it's i tell people well where should this go i'm like i don't know where do you want to see it well you know so my grandkids go to an art-based school mm-hmm. Uh, called Leonardo da Vinci and it's really great because they, they let them color their hair I know I've been there Yeah, they, I, I did a talk there oh so they do all kind of, they just love it and so one of the greatest things was my granddaughter Scarlett and I are very close she's, right. she's 10 and for my birthday she gave me plants mm-hmm. I thought it was just so sweet I mean, I, mean, I mean she's 10 years yeah, old she's like actually, Papa yeah. Jamie I want you to you know you can plant these and, actually had stuff. chicken coops there yeah they all kinds of stuff they still have those chicken I think they do, I think they do. Yeah. and she's so excited about being out there and with her teacher with the teacher's name Sorry, teacher. I don't remember the name, uh, but my granddaughter's <laughs> really happy, which makes my daughter happy and me happy. But the fact, but the fact that she gave me plants as a gift, right. grants that I mean, a kids lot. don't do. I mean, they don't no. do that nowadays. And so I'm so happy for her because I'm like, you're blunt. <laughs> oh my god, they aren't old enough for that yet. There, there. In uh, the hood. Yeah, they, yeah, that's just. Right. But when you, I mean, you know why, Jay? You know, I, this whole I call what I do gangster gardening. Mm-hmm. One reason because it's renegade ish. Yeah. And. Because you're 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 taking over a system, you're changing a system when you when you start being self sufficient and growing your own food. Mm, yeah. But also it's because of the messages that these kids constantly constantly get, you know, with this rap music, oh, you yeah. know, with this misogynistic stuff and this money, 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 truffle butter. Like really, right. yeah, we, we really want our kids to to, to, to find out what right. this is. We right. really want them having that kind of, you know, we really, you know, what what's What's a gangster? You know, right. What, what is that gangster? I mean, these. How many of our kids are in prison because of a lot of these songs, a lot of these stories that are made mm-hmm. up that they hear and they contribute that to. That's what a man does. That's what that's gangster. Yeah. That's tough. No, nah, dude, the soil is tough. You want to put some work in? Get a shovel, mm-hmm. not a gun, not a knife. Like get that. a shovel and some seeds. That's the kind of work we need put in. So we got to change their vernacular on what a gangster I like that. Re- and how a gangster builds a community not destroy it you know because most of the stuff that you hear it was the by design yeah these oh, yeah. music industry design mm-hmm. this music why can't we hear positive songs on the radio right that's, that's not by design yeah, right. there's, there's tons of positive oh there's tons of tons thou, millions of songs bunch of conscious songs out there's conscious rap out there exactly it, it, it didn't go you won't, away you won't the rest of development back in the 90s right. it's still it's still out there well, yeah. Yeah. people got, are doing it even my guy dj cave him okay. you know look him up he's um he's a beast you know um um his his album's called the produce section Oh, how fun. You know, okay. Um, he's got a song called Brown Rice and Broccoli. You know, so. <laughs> I like uh, that. Um, you know, so. He needs to be played on the radio. He needs to be played no, on the radio. He should sure, played sure. in the video. That's what we need oh, more that, of he, that. Yeah, and, and it's, it's terrible. So what we get is these so-called gangsters, and these kids, that's what they get to emulate. Mm-hmm. So, um, and and it's, look at the chain of, of people who benefit from this behavior. Mm-hmm can't tell me it's by, not by design. That's true. Now, for you, because of a mixed race background, how did that play into this film for you? Did you, why'd you, what'd you come out with it, you know? Because you had to grow up with the one side here in Hollywood, one in South Central. Can you expand on that a little bit? Um, yeah, I think uh, that uh, there, there's still a disparity. You know, the property values have <laughs> gone up all over LA and yes. you and it has created more businesses and cool restaurants and all that stuff but when you go to South LA 
it's still very hard to find something quick and easy to eat. That's true. And I, I think that's going to change, though. The metro is going, well, going through my neighborhood right no, now. No, already dead. I'm yeah. on Expedition. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm near Crenshaw. So I want to tell you about my business, obviously, where I'm no, at. No, so I'm, um, I'm going to cover book because I'm at the next station. Oh, okay. Literally in front of my house. Oh, how funny. So, okay. Uh, I think it's going to change, D, because of, you know, all of a sudden you're seeing these little skinny white girls with their lattes at, you know, at 12 noon jogging their dogs with their little teeny dogs. That's true. And so it's changing. Mm-hmm. What it is. It's going to change. It's like, yeah. I hear, well, you know, we're going to try to have the the neighborhood max out at like a six <laughs> 600,000. Oh, that's, oh right. that's up to you? Right. You know, so we're, it's, it's terrible because we're, we're not only losing, have lost our culture, you know, now we're about to lose our whole, our neighborhoods. It's happening again. And you have people, I don't know how do you curtail that. I don't know right. how, but it's happening. And we're going to, we're going to see the cafes. We're going to say, Hopefully. but what I'm trying to tell people is this is the same neighborhood. It's just these different people here. It's the same street. It's the same address. It's the same house. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if they can come in here and do this, why can't we do this? Right. You know, why, why, why are you forced to, to leave your neighborhood all of a sudden? Because you can't afford, you know, the, um, the house. It's right. terrible, man. And you, and you came into the neighborhood because you're like, I want to shine a light on this, obviously. Right. Because you, you saw the difference. Right. Well, I wanted to explore myself, you know, coming from, mm-hmm. like, my black dad was gone. So I brought, got brought up by a, a white mom. Mm. So there's a lot of it also has to do with, like, me exploring my own blackness and blackness, then, yeah. not that there aren't black folks in L- Hollywood but <laughs> or, you know or, or you <laughs> right. know but like right. going to see you know around the issue as well and also as far as like you know um it's not called homogenized. What's it called when the whole... What's it called? Gentrification. Gentrification. Yeah. Oh, it's not I know. Right. It's like, it's homogenized. Right. I mean, that's something different, but, but yes. I was going to say, I feel like, <laughs> ultimately, we, we want a very green planet, and we want our, ourselves to all kind of, like, acclimate together, no matter what color our skin is. I yes. Just feel, I feel like that's my... I've always kind of operated as a bridge, I feel like. Okay. On... on communication bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's, that's what I, I would hope that would happen, you know, if... If the property value goes up and people are living black and white together and and brown together, yeah, um, that we green our our neighborhoods exactly. and, and do that all at the same time. Because my neighbors, I don't care where my neighbors are as long as they take care of their stuff. Yeah, and we're in this again village mentality. We're in this together. And and schooling would mm-hmm. I would hope that that would improve in in South Los Angeles. Mm, if, yeah, I you know there's some stuff that really bothers me as far as you know people having resources to the same things that kids in schools that have a you know higher income Mm -hmm. bracket um so i'm I'm hoping that that my little garden movie yes our little garden movie um (laughs) makes a difference because the property value does go up when you put a garden in the ground it actually changes how much your property is worth. Yes, it does. It does bring the neighbors out. <laughs> right. People get to know each other because of it. You're spending less money on food. You're eating healthier. You're, you're killing yourself less. Yes. Because you're not eating yes. this stuff. And Our kids are dying. Yeah, they're getting they're getting diabetes at right. like four. I call it diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Diabetes. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 But yeah. basically, we're, 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 I mean, I have I have cousins. Don't put them on blast. But I have cousins who they shouldn't be the way they shouldn't look the way they look. At the ages yeah, they but are. they don't. But it's hard, man, because you know this this food that they're eating. They have become this food. You know, they're it's changed the molecular structure of, mm-hmm. of who they are. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. They don't. You know. So how do we? I mean, this is okay. So this is one one way of doing this. Is the other way is people. if you change the soil, you change the community. I like that. I like that. Compost rules. Compost is the most sexiest thing on the planet. Hey, I also take my my um, my eggshells. Everything, uh, everything. I mean, hair. I repurpose stuff all the time. Hair. Everything. Yeah. Everything. I mean, people. It's like if it's organic material, mm-hmm. it's going in my compost. Yeah. Period. But see, again, I learned from my grandmother. I didn't. I mean, that's what this feels be yeah, great. That's funny. We're gonna get this. Well, you know what, what's there. interesting is that I try to replicate a forest. Okay. in my garden so mother nature doesn't produce any waste mm-hmm. 
everything she produces is a resource. Yeah, right. But we don't see it like that. I tell you, a leaf falls for a reason yes. in a particular season. It's by design. Okay, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful design. This leaf has multiple functions. Okay, mm, first yeah. of all, it gives the tree energy. Okay, then when the season changes, it falls on the ground. It's not debris. That's a mulch now. Mm -hmm. So the water percolates down. It just doesn't go down there. Mm -hmm. This because the leaves are shielding yeah. the water. Yeah. And then what does it turn to? It turns into soil. Yeah. So and then it repeats. And then it, I love it. You're it such repeats. a poet. You are. Really? Oh. You are. I love it. I mean, just I, I got eight million. No, sound, I mean, I, I, I love this. You have eight million sound bites. I just, I, I want to like cut every sound bite you say and just put it out and put it out there. No, I mean when you watch. I mean, I'm, I'm serious when I say compost changed mm -hmm. my life. No, I, I believe yeah, it. Yeah, really. It let me know that nothing ever dies ever. It's an energy transfer, period. Mm -hmm. You know. So I mean, and, and so do we die, or is it in, do our energy? We're energy. We're like energy. A, yeah, we're energy. I just wanted that. And, I don't, I don't, and bacteria. Yeah. A, that, yeah, that too. a gang of bacteria. Like, I, tell people, I, tell, I tell people that we're, I don't believe in closure. Right. There's no closure. We're just, it's just a cycle. We just kind yeah. of continually. But when yeah. you look at the forest, I mean, when you look, who who's gardening in the forest? Right. So how do we have this, this, this beautiful soil? How do we have, no one's even touching it. You don't have some elves right. in the garden with hoes and shovels messing mm. up the soil. You know, yeah. so it's, it's, um, I mean, you, you, when we, Look, we see how simple this really, really is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the um, but yeah, I, I I try to plant like like Mother Nature, man, like yeah. the for, like the forest does, replicate the forest. Yeah. You know, I could talk to you guys for another three or four hours. We don't have that kind of time. We don't. I'm like this is this is. I mean, this is seriously life changing stuff for me. I mean, I'm I'm dead serious. I know we joke around, but this, this is really like this is an no, honor. it is, it is. But I mean, <laughs> I think an honor. It's, it, it's an honor. It is. We we. I mean, I'm honored to be here and for the word to get out, and um, that I'm I'm honored and um, by the peace that we've been able to put together, Very good. and um, um, and the people people that had that it has reached around the world. Um, the film hasn't, but people are seeing it. Like, how do yes. we get this in, yeah. in, in in Denmark? How do we get this? Oh, how fun. Yeah, how do we get this in Germany? You know, I, I got major, major crazy, crazy wow. fans. Wow, and, that's um, great. And yeah. like you, in the UK, man, and they're wow. like, no, we want the film now. And you know? yeah, because this, this, this is something that can transfer to the south side of London or Detroit or Everybody. you know Bronx I mean this is something that's not just South Central Los Angeles no 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 it's well it's it's worldwide right yeah. worldwide now and I just want to briefly mention John Legend's Get Lifted Company is part of this correct yeah he executive produced Lifted. the movie and so that's very cool came on and saw an earlier cut and got behind it to very support good. it yeah. very oh, yeah. good John, John is, John's great love people. some John no no he's, 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 he's the truth I mean it really good. is now I always ask my guests two questions at the end of every show that I do so you have to answer unfortunately the answer briefly because I, I would love to hear some of your in, in, intimate answers okay. to some of these questions sex but, yes okay here we go that's, that's the answer <laughs> that's the answer, the answer. Okay, Plant, gardening and sex those right. two things I like those and, a, and some whiskey <laughs> um, okay so this is for both you guys what word should we take out of our vocabularies start with you no like that hope okay what word do you think we should add back into our vocabularies or add to our vocabularies? I know people, that's, just, that's the one people want. Mm. Integrity. There you go. I'll talk yours. Okay. I don't have one written yet. I will email you. Do that. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Okay, what she's going to do is she's going to email it to me and I will post it on the Breaking Into Facebook page. Okay. I will do that. That's, no, seriously, I'll do that. I asked someone else the same thing. They were like, that's a good question. I really want, I want to give you a good answer. So you can, yeah. you can email me anytime and tell it or whatever and pass it to whoever. Okay. And I will post it, actually. Okay. I'll post it with your picture and a link to the film. <laughs> with just the word. No, and a link to the film. Right. And I'll say the question. Right. Because I do this with every guest. So they, my, my people know that I do this question for everybody. But thank you guys for being on here. It is an absolute honor and pleasure. Hours. And I completely can't wait to see this film. It's December 1st, VOD. And you said theatrical VOD also? Yes. And he said on the 3rd of December, it's playing at the Independent. Independent downtown. In downtown. Ron Finley, Delilah Velo. And you can follow us on Facebook at Breaking Into, Twitter, Black Hope LA. You can follow me with the hashtag Breaking Into, and I will be posting links to this show, of course. We have a bunch of other shows on Black Hollywood Live. Thank you for joining us, and have a great Thanksgiving. Yay! From Executives.
Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at BlackHollywoodLive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.